It's been three months since Maya Miliete vanished from her Chula Vista home. Today, friends, family, and community members came together for a march and prayer vigil with the hope of finding answers. News 8's Amanda Shotsky is at Chula Vista Community Park with more. Through tears, Maya's family thanked everyone for their continued community support. They say that this has been a very difficult three months, but they are not giving up hope that they're going to bring Maya home. Lord, we know that you are not the one who forgets. Rather, you are the one who remembers. You will not forget Maya. You have not forgotten Maya. Through prayer, community outreach, no, it's good. It's good. and putting one foot in front of the other. These are the steps being taken to hopefully find missing mother of three, Maya Miliete. Our main goal is just to find her, to bring her home, and to support the family 100%. On Sunday, dozens turned out for a march and prayer vigil for Maya, marking three months since she disappeared from her Chula Vista home. What happened to her? She just didn't just vanish and didn't air. Maya's sister and brother-in-law have been speaking on the family's behalf. They say they are beyond grateful for the outpouring of support from the community, from those who organized a search this weekend in Rancho San Diego to others who have sent letters, donations, and prayers. It gives us that little hope every yeah. day we hear those messages, those prayers. It picks our souls up, you know, from the ground and just says, keep moving forward. Just this week, there are new possible clues surrounding Maya's disappearance in the neighborhood where she lives with her husband Larry and three kids. Audio from a surveillance camera picked up six loud bangs on January 7th, the night that Maya went missing. <sighs> The family says while they have not had much help from Maya's husband or police, they are expanding their search efforts by partnering with the group Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. And next week, an episode of the Dr. Phil Show will be focused on the case. She's filling out paperwork for, with a divorce lawyer on the 7th and goes missing on the 8th. That's, that's correct. <laughs> marching onward to solve this mystery and bring Maya Miliete home. Until we find her, then maybe we could rest. But at this point, no resting for us. Dr. Phil's coverage of Maya's case will be airing tomorrow at 3 p.m. right here on CBS 8. Back to you. This afternoon at Civic Center Plaza, an interfaith vigil to remember Randy Ferris, Walter Jones, and Rondi Diffendall. Those were the three homeless men who were run over and killed while sleeping in their tents on a downtown sidewalk back on March 15th. Some who knew the men spoke passionately about their friends. These critics didn't know Walter. I know he slept on the sidewalk. I know. But he still was a man of integrity. He kept his word. Six others were injured in the crash. The 72-year-old driver involved is facing vehicular manslaughter and DUI charges. He's on house arrest while his case proceeds. Today in Encinitas, a student protest demanding action from San Diego Union School District officials against alleged racism, sexual assault, and discrimination on school campuses. Many of my fellow classmates, both current and former, have come to our administration, our teachers, and to discuss instances of racism that they have experienced, including myself. However, each time we have been denied anything regarding systemic change. Some say they were denied the opportunity to form a black student union on campus to serve students of color. We were told that it was discriminatory, basically, so we feel that that was suppressing our voices. This evening, Superintendent Robert Haley responded to the protest and said in part, San Diego Union High School District believes very strongly that all students are entitled to a successful education. We believe in the team approach to school district governance, which includes our students, family, staff, and community. We want everyone engaged, inspired, and prepared to make not just our schools a better place, but our community, state, nation, and world. In Huntington Beach, three people have been arrested after hundreds of counter protesters clashed with those gathered for a planned extremist rally. Over the past week, racist flyers promoting the KKK were left around town and social media posts advertised a White Lives Matter rally at the pier. A local Black Lives Matter group said that with the rise in hate crimes against people of color, they needed to show up in opposition today. 
somebody has to stand up and somebody has to say something. Somebody has to say, this is not okay. Some supporters of former President Trump also arrived to counter protest the Black Lives Matter group. Police declared an unlawful assembly around 2.30 and ordered the crowd to disperse. Tomorrow, the county's largest school district, San Diego Unified, will be returning to in-person learning for all students who chose that option. After spending more than a year at home, it will be a big change for kids as well as some parents. I spoke with Dr. Tanika Green, a professor in the Department of Counseling and School Psychology at San Diego State, on ways to make the transition a bit smoother. And this is going to be a huge adjustment, right? Yes, absolutely. I, I think about my own daughter, who's been back for a couple of weeks, but from kindergarten to high school, kids are anxious about what's going to happen in this new normal or this new world that they're going to be living in. And one of the things that I've been doing and that, that I've been telling parents to do is just check in with your child. You know, have a conversation about what do you want to know? What, you know, what are you anxious about? However you normally check in at bedtime, with younger kids, you can read a book about someone who is going through a new milestone. How do we address this with the older kids? Again, normalizing those feelings, checking in, but also routine, routine, routine. Have them get back into the routine of going back to bed on time, taking that screen time away for at least an hour before bedtime, planning what they're wearing for the next day. Parents, how do we prepare ourselves? I think the first thing that you have to do is just take a moment to breathe. So just know, again, just like you tell your team, uh, it's not going to be perfect, then have that expectation. Just celebrate the little successes and focus on what's strong instead of what's wrong. So if your kid comes home dirty face, uh, messed up clothes, celebrate. Yes, you're, you're doing well. You, you made it through the day. Some good advice there. The San Diego Unified School District isn't the only one returning to class this week. Some students in the San Ysidro School District will be doing the same with a hybrid learning program. Middle school students will start their program tomorrow with elementary school students beginning Tuesday. Parents also have the choice for their children to continue distance learning. Well, lately, San Diego restaurants have been packed with people who can't wait to get back with their friends and enjoy a meal. And with San Diego County in the orange tier, that gives restaurants license to expand indoor dining. And if you need more convincing, today marks the start of San Diego Restaurant Week. News 8's Tim Blodgett has more on the big week for our local eateries. This year, San Diego Restaurant Week happens when the county moves into a less restrictive tier. So with people itching to get out, it's no wonder why the hottest eateries around San Diego are packed to the brim. At brunch time Sunday, the outdoor patios in the downtown corridor of Little Italy in the gas lamp were packed with eaters ready to enjoy an almost fully reopened San Diego. There's only so much food we can make, you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Roy Elam is a chef and owner of Donna Jean, a restaurant near Balboa Park. The all-vegan eatery boasts a large patio and has been able to accommodate the influx of paying customers. Though Orange Tier now allows restaurants to serve food indoors at 50% capacity, many of the restaurants I saw this afternoon had the bulk of their customers in outdoor parklets. We've got the outdoor patio and we, we're not in a rush to open up the indoor and so we, uh, more of our staff has a chance to get their vaccinations. So for, for now, uh, we know that June 15th is when the governor said they're going to open everything up so we're planning on being having the indoor open by then. The 11th also marks the start of San Diego Restaurant Week. Countywide, there's more than 180 eateries offering a special price fix menu like and our, our mushroom risotto, which is a California arborio rice, porcini, uh, maitakis, uh, our house made butter and parmesan to finish it off, some asparagus and Meyer lemon juice. While restaurant week usually signals a boost in profit and exposure for San Diego's cafes and bistros, with the general excitement that diners are now able to have brunch with friends on a San Diego afternoon, that's good enough exposure for any restaurant. We don't push ourselves as a vegan restaurant. So we just try to be a neighborhood restaurant that happens to not serve any animal products. And that's that's worked really well for us. Tim Blodgett, News 8. Lots of good options out there. Well, the weather has been cooperating for those diners who choose to eat outside. 
Will it continue for Restaurant Week? Meteorologist Sean Stiles joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. Hi, Sean. Uh, good evening, Shannon. Glad to have you aboard here. I, by San Diego standards, it might be a little bit cool the next two or three days, but not all of Restaurant Week. Today was spectacular. I mean, almost exactly where we should be. 67 was our high overnight low of 57, 55 is where we should be. So you'd be splitting hairs there if you said you're not on the money. Technically, we're not, but we'll take it. Here's a look what's going to be happening over the next three days. So increasing onshore flow, it'll be much cooler compared to what we've seen. And then a chance of some sprinkles, but they'll come late at night, tomorrow night, into the early morning on Tuesday and then a warming trend after that through the midweek and into the weekend. So that's looking good. Here's where we are tomorrow 65 63 63. So coming from 70 yesterday and 67 today to a 63 for us weather wimps in San Diego. I being a native and one of those wimps, it'll feel chilly 71 though inland 66 for you folks in the inland microclimates by Tuesday and it'll stay that way until Wednesday and Thursday. 